The next speaker that I want to introduce is uh, Edwin Ainsel. And uh, Edward it is a PhD uh, student as well. And he is, um, he is from the School of Culture and Security at Moscow. And he's going to speak under the title Flying Solo, Experiencing COVID-19 in the Nordics. Edwin, we invited Edwin to, Edward, Edwin to speak uh, and to open our eyes for perspectives about making a home, being on transit, coping with fear, and re-entaining hope. So Edwin, are you here? Yes, I'm here. I want to welcome you. I'll welcome you very much. Thank you for this opportunity. And uh, yeah, as a put, I'm a PhD student at the university. And I like, I have a small, I don't have a slideshow, but a small presentation that I hope uh, will make sense along the way. So as it is, it's titled Flying Solo, Experiencing COVID-19 in the Nordics. As a hectic field work year came to its end, I looked forward to being the other in an academic adventure that so far promised and delivered frustration, loss, near-death experiences, hope, and desire in equal measure. It was time not to end my fieldwork engagements, but distance myself from the field, a respite from the somewhat overwhelming experiences of fieldwork amongst patients, caregivers, health workers, making do, and innovatively improvising healthcare in unstable places. However, for many of my interlocutors, notably patients with their generally diseased bodies, the cruel ends were inevitable. Maybe, just maybe, when I get to my university and sit down with colleagues and seniors, I will find reprieve from the trauma and grotesque images haunting me and deeply entrenched in my fieldwork experiences. Maybe, just maybe, I will be able to get to understand how well to articulate these experiences. I convinced myself as I prepared to leave the field where a utopian health agenda, translating and localizing global political commitments in health promised to inspire my academic endeavor and voice historically embedded health inequalities in access and affordability. As I made my plans, news of a new strain of coronavirus, COVID-19, with its origin in Wuhan, China, diffused through the mainstream media and social media to East Africa. Just like the majority of the publics, I construed the pandemic as being far away and the perceived risks and its extensive reach and alterations to the social fabric as we knew it, a distant concern. Oblivious of the near future that COVID-19 will bring, I moved to my primary institution, my new home, a home that I had come to experience, be it for a mere six months before being hurried off into the field. I was, after all, a beneficiary of an institutional funding and deliverables paramount in academia. However, in the short span, I had met, interacted, and enjoyed stimulating academic conversations and connections that spurred me on and reassured my status as an eager junior researcher. It was an enabling environment where cohorts and seniors alike encourage one another through formal and informal discussions. However, my desire to utilize this promising opportunity was of the utmost importance. On arrival, the pandemic that I had construed as a far away concern was beginning to take shape as transnational mobility that had ironically enabled my academic adventure was responsible for its rapid transmittability. Within days of my arrival, social measures became the go-to social contracts, redefining social interactions. The desire to understand, integrate, and learn about the other suddenly became limited. Making a home became an issue of isolation into a close network of kin, a luxury that I could not afford. Fitting in was limited to technology and isolations from an invisible enemy. From, for some interactions that I was aware of, they retreated from the center and found, be it 
temporary reprieve in the peripheries. Colleagues, a luxury that I had suddenly reduced significantly and the temporal nature of our contractual engagements with the institution meant that most connections I had, I had were on field work, finding their way back or simply engaged in the transnational mobility that academia offered to meet their academic requirements. Personally, I could not leave. I was on borrowed time and my presence here was to actualize and fulfill the contractual demands I was signatory to. I need to utilize every window of opportunity to meet my academic schedule. For I am but a cog in an, in an industrial whip machine. I have to galvanize my individuality for success. I have to simply desire the otherness to stimulate my resilience. Besides, back home, the pandemic was beginning to unravel. Close kin and interlocutors were falling prey to the pandemic as the customary politicization of the pandemic made it an unwise choice. Could I go home and mourn? Well, what good could, could come of it? Do I let my fear, anxiety, loss, and frustration overhaul the need for completion? A mark of success in this uncertain future? Do I sit back and forget the temporal status and contractual arguments that are somewhat ironclad? Do I forget the reality of the reception I received where doubt was cast by the bureaucratic operators from the get-go? Do I forget similar doubts which are not so distant memories in my new temporary settings in other parts of the Nordics? Do I forget the lonely path I am on? No, I need to be keen. I need to turn fear, anxiety, frustration, and loss into hope, ambition, desire, and aspiration for success. This will not be a proper reason I have learned my lesson. I have to be vigilant and deliver. Besides, I am but a cog a cog in an industrial will, a will that will not stop moving, a will whose efficiency and effectiveness is measured by resilience and productivity. As the Nordic society enters into social contracts, as Dr. Tedros puts it with its publics, I should not be blind to my position and the temporal nature of my presence and benefits of these strong welfare-based societies. I need to prove myself by delivering to stand the slightest of chances to fly again. Currently, my short haul flight is about to touch down and the watchtower and the pilot have to adhere to a schedule. Detours and rerouting are an economical options for economy class passengers such as myself. I need to do it for the dreams of an illiterate woman, not by choice, but by design, who's grateful to have against all odds her seed makes strides for a better life. After all, education, she knows, is the greatest equalizer in an unequal world. I need to forget about the uncertain future that COVID-19 conveys and the bureaucratic absurdities I experience as I move through the Nordics, where doubt in my credential is a constant reminder that I, I am on borrowed time. I am flying solo. I am the other, a possible intruder, and I have to weather the storms. I need to actualize academic success for the interlocutors as well, my people, and make meaning of the time spent on Nordic taxpayer funds. I have to actualize the aspiration of the hopeful and anxious communities of mothers who have inspired me through their collective desire to raise me as their own, a success story. I cannot afford to fail. COVID-19 is nothing but an excuse to me, despite its cruel realities, and I cannot afford to break down. I need to keep walking. Time is of the essence. Thank you.